Hello everybody. I have this 175 watt metal halide outdoor wall fixture, wall light. And the bulb's getting pretty temperamental. In cold weather lately I haven't been able to get the bulb to ignite and I've tracked it down to a faulty bulb. I created a video elsewhere that talks about uh, why this bulb won't start. Uh, the bimetal is not making contact with the starting electrode and therefore uh, since the starting electrode is not getting any power the gas won't ignite and therefore the bulb won't work. So rather than replace this bulb with a new bulb, which a uh, new bulb is going to be you know 10 bucks plus or minus depending on what quality you want to get. You could go up as high as 20 but you know 8 to 20 dollars for a new replacement 175 watt metal halide bulb. I decided to replace it with an LED corn cob lamp. There are a lot of videos out there on how to convert these metal halide fixtures to LEDs, so I'm not going to waste a lot of uh, time or your time walking talking about that. Uh, but the bottom line is I'm just going to remove the capacitor, the ballast, and direct wire the black and white wires that come off the socket straight to uh, the incoming power. Yours may be a little different if you have a photo cell. As a matter of fact, I am going to add a photo cell for dusk dawn control. The balance of my video is really focused around LED corn cob light bulb selection. And I studied this pretty carefully on paper to try to determine which bulb would give me the closest output to the metal halide lamp that I have. I mean, metal halide has a lot of advantages. I love the color. It's very bright, and at the time I put this in, this was like more than 15 years ago. But with the LED performance today, I can certainly reduce my energy consumption and uh, probably and also eliminate the time delays associated with cold starts and restrikes and things of that nature. So all those disadvantages of metal halide go away with the LED, as best I can tell. We'll see in the performance here shortly. So step one in the process is you got to figure out which base you have on your lamp. Uh, this base that you're looking at here happens to be what is called an E26 or a medium base. It is the same as you find on most of the incandescent lamps that you have in your house. So now that you know the base size, let's look at the lamp. So here are the specs of a 175 watt metal halide lamp. I just grabbed the first set of specs I could find. And the thing to pay attention to here is the lumens, 14,400 lumens, uh, and the color temperature of 400, I'm sorry, 4,000 Kelvin. So that's what I'm going to try to match up. This is what I thought was going to be challenging. How do I figure out how many lumens from the LED is equivalent to this? Because aren't lumens lumens? Well, as it turns out, apparently lumens are not lumens. The LED is much more efficient at getting the lumens down to the ground. Uh, that's what I read in many places. That seems to be the prevailing thought. So that would suggest that you can get by with fewer lumens than 14,400 and still get approximately the same amount of light at the ground, which is candidly all we care about, right? We care about light at the ground. We so here are the specs for the... LED corn cob light that I purchased that it's going to have a color temperature of somewhere between 2700 and 6500 Kelvin it's going to be somewhere between 4800 and 5200 lumens and you can see this equivalent line it says equivalent to an 80 watt CFL or 150 watt metal halide high pressure sodium or high intensity discharge lamp so based on that, I have selected this bulb. It's a 40 watt. And we'll see how it performs. Well, I've run into a few problems. It looks like nothing's ever simple. Here's my original lamp. And here's the LED lamp. I was focused much more on performance and cost as opposed to size. I could have spent perhaps twice as much money and got a little bit smaller bulb. So it looks like it'll fit in the housing, but that means uh, this bracket here for this is too flimsy, so the lamp doesn't, and this because of the weight of the bulb, the lamp doesn't want to rest horizontally. So there's a lot of it wants to wants to uh, 
rest like this so you can see that that's not going to be satisfactory to me so I'm going to beef up this bracket here I'm going to have to modify the reflectors just a little bit uh, but everything will fit in. I did have to take out the old uh, starting circuit. I was planning on leaving that in case somebody wanted to convert it back to a metal halide, but that plan is out for now because of the size of the bulb. And I want to be able to keep all the reflectors in place, even though I'm going, I'm going to adjust them and move them around a little bit. I'll get this bulb in and it'll be done right. So I'm not going to show you all I'm going to go through. I want to get this project done and spend more time getting it completed, getting the project completed than videotaping, but as you can see here it all fits. I just have to get the reflectors in. Well I have the light fixture mounted back on the house, but the retrofit was not quite as easy as I had expected. The first problem I ran into was the light is so heavy that the aluminum brackets that were holding the lamp holder were too flimsy to hold the light at a horizontal position. So I had to beef up the aluminum brackets with steel brackets. Uh, the second thing I had to do is I had to relocate the lamp holder because that corn cob light is so much larger than the metal halide bulb. And then lastly I had to move the reflectors around a little bit to accommodate the larger bulb. I actually uh, ended up losing my end reflectors but uh, I have reflectors all the way around the ball, but not on either end. So we'll fire it up later on this evening and see uh, what it looks like. Well, this is the first chance I've had to look at the light at night. And I'd have to say I'm very happy with it. There you have it. Hey, thanks for watching. If you found this at all helpful, how about a thumbs up or subscribe?